Hey Lobos, Ben Johnson here to show you how to make breakout rooms using Google Meets. A lot of you have seen it in Zoom and want to replicate that experience for your students. Basically what you do is deliver a 15-20 minute presentation using Google Meets like you normally would, but at the end of that 15 minutes you want your students to break into smaller groups so they can collaborate with each other and have a chance to, to talk because if they're in a group with 36 kids it's going to be hard for everybody to have some voice time. So a few things that you need to do. First you need to install an extension in Chrome called Google Meet Grid View. You can just Google that. I'm using this one that's titled Fix. It's a green grid. You may have to restart your computer after you install it. At least that's been my experience with some of these extensions. Then after you do that, you need to install Google Meet Attendees and Breakout Rooms. And again, you can just Google that. It looks like a little clothes hanger person. And you're going to get those up on your toolbar. You need to see this grid up on your toolbar. If you're not seeing that, you need to click on this puzzle piece and make sure that you've got that pinned to your toolbar. The um, breakout room one doesn't necessarily need to be there, but it won't hurt anything. So that's first things first. Get those installed. Restart your computer. Your students don't need them, just the teacher. Then you're going to go into your Google Classroom. You're going to make sure that you have the um, Google Meet enabled up here, and that's what you're going to have your students click on at the beginning of the period when you're doing that synchronous instruction. You'll need to email the expectations out to the students and parents that they're in that Google Classroom at the beginning of the period. And within a few minutes, they'll click on that. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to, I've got my colleague in this class as a student, and she's going to join so that you can see how this technology works. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that now. Remember, your students can't get into this, this room until you've joined it as a teacher. So if they're there and you're five minutes late, they're going to be really frustrated because they're not going to be able to get in. So make sure that you're timely with that. I don't need this information unless I was going to invite like a guest speaker. Then I could send them that code. But your students will just use the Google Classroom to access this area. So at this point, I would just go ahead and, and use the um, Google Meet just like I, I normally would. I might uh, present my my desktop now and go through a Google presentation or whatever um, I've built for the kids or if I'm just talking to them that's okay too. After that time when you've you messaged out to your 30 or so students at this point you're going to explain to them okay guys I need you to open up your chat on the side and I'm going to be pasting groups here along with links for your own breakout rooms so you'll have to make sure to tell them to have that chat window open over here on the side. All right, so I'm going to get my colleague in the room with me real quick. All right, my coworker Stella's in the room with me now as a student. She just went to the Google Classroom and clicked on that link, and because I was already in it, she was able to join. I've got the grid view turned on, but if you didn't, you would just need to turn, turn that on. There's some options here you might want to check. Highlight the speaker, include yourself in the grid, enable grid view by default. Again, your kids don't need to have this. This is really for the teacher to be able to see all the students. In fact, you probably don't want your students to have this necessarily. It's not going to gain any benefit for them. Really, they can still go down to this tile view and see, you know, 16 of their classmates. So, But anyways, um, so in order to use the breakout rooms, I need to click on my little breakout guy here. And I need to refresh my list as students are coming in because they're going to probably be, you know, a few minutes late. So you definitely don't want to start the breakout room until you know everybody's there. Make sure that you refresh that list. There's a cog here that um, you can sort by last name include yourself. So um, change whatever settings you want here. And then this is a nice way to take attendance. You could actually copy this list every day into a Google spreadsheet so you have a copy of your attendance. And, and this might be a good way to tell some of the support personnel in the building like, hey, this student hasn't hasn't been in my synchronous learning all week. I'm worried about this student and then they can reach out. So take advantage of this tool because they really do want the students to be synchronous with you if they can. All right, but that's not the cool feature of this. The cool feature is the sh uh, show group generator. And um, by the way, your students aren't going to be seeing any of this stuff. But over here, you pick the number of groups. And because I've only got the two of us, um, I'll just do two groups. It's going to be pretty lame. And then I just click generate groups. Okay. And now that I've generated the groups, I'm going to go ahead and copy those groups and then I'm going to open up my chat. Okay, and then down here in the chat, I'm going to tell students, look, I'm pasting your name and, and your group number next to your name. And that's the Google Meet that you're going to go into in a second. 
So I need to close this to get my groups back up and now I'm going to copy the meet links. Okay, so it's a two-step process and then I go back here and I paste those meet links in and um, now Stella knows which group to go to, I know which group to go to, and at this point I would tell students, look, you're going to go into this room, it's 9.10 right now, I'm going to have you work with your partner until 9.20, and then at 9.20 I want you to come back into this, this room, and if you lose this room you can just go back to the Google Classroom and just click on this link to get back to this room. But you'll want to give them instructions on that or else they're going to be lost out there and they'll be wondering what, where is everybody at. So just make sure that you explain to come back into this room at 9.20 or whatever time you have set up. So I'll have Stella go ahead. Hopefully she's got some um, headphones on. Go ahead and go into this first room. And, and I'll even though I'm supposed to go into the second room, I'll just go into that first room so that you can see Stella and I in this room together hopefully and I'll go ahead and join and here's Stella and I Let's see because I have this grid view installed I'll be able to see her but um, you could always tell students look if you're not seeing all the people in your group you can change this layout here and um, use whatever whatever option you want but since I have the grid view I'll just go ahead and use that so now Stella and I broken off from the main group we can have our our side conversation for the next 15 10 minutes so we each have a chance to talk because back in the big room with 36 students we just lost that opportunity because of course you can't have 36 students talking to each other right so that's the whole point of these small rooms give your students some some questions to answer maybe there's some questions on a google doc um, Maybe you've got a Google form they're going to fill out together, work through. Maybe they're going to go look at some websites, discuss something. But this is, I mean, this is the best we've got right now. You can't pull four tables together and have kids discuss. So this is, this is the alternative to that. So hopefully you can utilize this technique to get some more interaction. I know the kids miss each other. And so this is, for now, as good as we're going to be able to do. So anyways, um, hopefully this helped out. Uh, if your extensions aren't working, again, try to restart the computer. Know that the kids don't need them. And then just make sure that you message out to the students clearly um, what, what it is that they're going to do. If you feel like they're going to get lost, remember you could just make a little screencast-o-matic recording um, to, to show the, the students what, what they're going to see. And if you need to use a colleague as a guinea pig um, for testing, grab grab your neighbor and um, put them into your Google Classroom as a student, and then you can test it out just like I've done here. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Hope this helps. And if uh, if you have any questions, come on down, and I'll be able to help you out. Thanks, Lobos.